Hello, we are Team Sorts Raffles Girls School Singapore, taking part in the Light Wakes Up League. I'm Ashley, the team captain, working on software with Cadence, and Esther and Chloe are doing hardware. And our team has also taken part in Robo Cup Singapore Open 2021, as well as Robo Cup Internationals 2021. So we decided to join this competition to have fun, as well as assess the ability of our robot. We also hope to meet other like-minded people and learn from the other teams. We prioritize finishing the hardware of one robot first before we split into two teams, with one team focusing on the hardware of the second robot and the other team focusing on software. And the preliminary mission was to showcase the abilities of our striker and goalie robots through individual demonstrations, as well as the 1v1 and 2v0 matches. So the problem that our team investigated was if the usage of a camera or ultrasonic sensors would be the most effective for localization of the robot, as well as for aiming. We concluded that depending on the situation of the playfield, the components used for aiming would differ. Initially, we used four ultrasonic sensors to obtain the position of the robot on the field. And from there, we calculated the angle the robot should travel at in order to reach the middle of the goal. However, this was not the best method as the ultrasonic sensors could be easily blocked by other robots on the field, which would result in a decreased confidence in, in, on the exact position of the robot. Hence, ultrasonic sensors alone were insufficient to determine its position and the angle the robot should travel at could not be determined accurately. Furthermore, when we use localization-based aiming, the robot is unable to determine which part, if any, of the goal is being blocked by another robot, and the striker will be unable to aim towards the empty part of the goal to, mi to maximize chances of scoring. Hence, we decided to use a camera and mirror in order to determine the location of the goal relative to the position of the robot. Using a camera is advantageous, as there's a wider field of view than ultrasonic sensors. Thus, even if the robot is being blocked, there's a high chance of the camera being able to see at least part of the goal, allowing the robot to attempt to aim. Furthermore, this also allows us to target the largest unblocked section of the goal, which will maximize our chances of scoring. The camera is also able to detect the largest block of colour of the goal, signifying the largest open area and aim towards that. Hence, even if there is a goalie defending the goal, it will still be able to see part of it. Furthermore, this method does not require the robot pinpointing its exact location on the field, and instead relies on finding blobs of colour, either yellow or blue, using thresholds in order to find the angle the robot should be travelling at in order to reach the goal. Hence, even if the robot is being blocked, it will still be able to head towards the goal. However, there is always room for error. In the case where the camera is unable to see any part of the goal and has possession of the ball, it will revert to using localization-based aiming in order to move towards the goal, which will involve using the ultrasonic sensor readings to read towards specific target coordinates, in this case, the middle of the goal. Since the camera is only used to detect the goals, we used a V-shaped mirror. In the future, we plan to use the position of our own goal to localize the goalie since it is often blocked when opponents are scoring. Now, moving on to the hardware of our robot. These are the components we used, as well as what the completed board looks like. We utilized a carbon fiber chassis designed in AutoCAD for its excellent strength to weight ratio. Further weight was saved by making the plates more skeletal to allow more electrical components to be added while ensuring that the board remains within the weight limit. 3D components were also designed with the same weight-centric principle and printed on a Cubicon in PLA as they are non-load bearing. This is an overview of the electronic design of a robot. For each board, we used a compass, two compound eyes, 18 times 6 thousandths, 4 ultrasonic sensors, and a camera. We decided to use a 4-wheel omnidirectional drive base as this allows the robot to travel in multiple directions as well as change direction rapidly depending on the speed and acceleration of each wheel. Furthermore, a 4-wheel drive base allows maximum amount of force to be exerted by the motors in order for the robot to move, whereas if a 3-wheel drive base is used, a smaller resultant force will be obtained. For example, if the robot is travelling in the direction of 0 degrees in a 4-wheel drive base, the motors at the back will also be moving and exerting a force on the robot, whereas in a 3-wheel drive base, the motors at the back will not be moving and contributing to the movement of the robot. Hence, a 4-wheel drive base allows the robot to travel at a faster speed. The centre of gravity of the board is kept as low as possible by placing the heaviest components, which are the motors and the battery, making up 628 grams out of the robot's total weight of 1,049 grams on the first layer. This greatly improves stability and prevents the robot from losing traction when accelerating. Now, moving on to the software. Our code is modular, comprising single motor and drive-based movement with compass correction, IR sensor reading and ball angle interpolation, as well as temp ultrasound and camera reading for localization to allow the pair of robots to defend and attack with great efficiency. The robot ensures that it does not go out of bounds by detecting the boundary lines using the TEM 6000s. When the robot senses the white boundary line, it moves in the direction of the nearest neutral point until the robot is certain that it is within the boundaries, helping it avoid going out of bounds. 
We also implemented striker goalie transition between the two robots to allow for effective offense and defense. The IR threshold for the goalie is increased. This is to ensure that the goalie stays near the goal at all times and does not move unless the ball is very close to it. When the ball is closer to the goalie, there is a higher chance that the opponents are in possession of the ball and moving it towards the goal to score. Thus, the goalie responds by moving towards the ball to intercept it. When the IR intensity is below the IR threshold, the goalie will not re react to it and it will instead stay near the goal. The linkage between the modules is as shown. Overall, the basic functions of our robot worked, but the code could have been further tuned to allow for more efficient and smoother movement. Through our RoboCup journey, we realized that the hardware design, electronic design and software algorithm of our robot greatly affects the final product. The hardware design not only affects the stability of the robot but also its capabilities. Addition of certain components such as the camera and ultrasonic sensors have allowed us to implement various strategies to optimize our gameplay. The electronic design affects how easy it is to fix issues with hardware and also affects the effectiveness of these components. For example, poor MSU wiring would block the field of view of the IR sensors and ultrasonic sensors, resulting in inaccurate values being obtained. Changes in the software algorithm also affect overall gameplay depending on which strategies we choose to use. Some main features of our robot is that it utilizes a camera to aid with aiming, which greatly increases the chances of it scoring even when against the opponent's goalie. However, in the future, we hope to implement a goalie to striker or striker to goalie transition in order to be able to score more goals. For goalie to striker, we intend to implement it when the goalie is in possession of the ball. This is because if the goalie is already in possession of the ball, it should be taking the opportunity to attempt to score instead of simply hitting it away from the goal. As for the striker to goalie transition, this should be implemented when either the goalie is attempting to score or when the goalie is out of play in order to ensure that there's a consistent defense in front of the goal. However, with the striker to goalie transition will require Bluetooth communication between both robots, which we also have to take into account in the future as we are not currently using any communication between both robots. We also plan to add a dribbler to allow a robot to have greater control over the ball and make it harder for the opponent to intercept it. A dribbler would better suit our desire rather than a kicker, as our robot running at maximum speed will allow the ball to travel faster than if a kicker were to be used, hence rendering it less useful. Overall, this competition has been an amazing experience for all of us. We've learned the importance of teamwork and adaptability, especially with the changing COVID situation. We are unable to meet in person often to work in the robots together. As such, we had to adapt to the new situation by shifting our meetings online to ensure that everyone was aware of the current state of robot as well as the code. We also realized the importance of time management as this is critical in allowing us to complete the robots. It was important to have a plan before starting and follow the timeline closely to ensure that we are on track. Lastly, we realized that the process is more important than the result. While it's satisfying to see a robot finally work after the eight months of air building it, we realized that the process we had taken in order to achieve that was more meaningful. Throughout this entire RoboCup journey, we have learned much new skills and knowledge in terms of both hardware and software, and this competition has indeed been an enriching experience for us. Thank you.